Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope this finds you well. I was um, transfixed this morning. Breakfast took longer than perhaps it needed to. Um, the uh, the finches have started to, to flock up and I had over 10 goldfinches, at least four green finches, alongside the other usual visitors, the blue tit and blue tits and Robin and Dunnock and everybody else in the um, in the garden this morning and they were having a wonderful time tucking into the bird food and now I've turned the sound off on the big computer we might get some peace and quiet good morning Barbara good morning Barbara thank you for being there as always lovely to see you did I miss you yesterday or were you there? Can't remember. I don't think you were there. Right, okay. Yesterday morning was quite encouraging in several ways. Um, at St Barnabas and at St Mary's from what I've heard. Right, today the church remembers St Ignatius. So he's going to get a name check once or twice this morning. Uh, the psalm is Psalm, I'm going to say 82, and I'm hoping that's right. I think it's 82. Mm -hmm. doo, 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 doo. Yes, it's 82. And the um, bit of Acts will be both familiar and not familiar, possibly. Um, Acts 26, 12 to 23. There we go. You were in the Cotswolds. I'm not jealous at all, Barbara. I love the Cotswolds. Um, Jane, good morning. Lovely to have you as well. And nice to see you actually having a proper day off to start the week. Um, right. So Psalm 82, a bit of Acts 26 and St Ignatius. So St Ignatius is an interesting cap chap. He was um he was a bishop of Antioch and yes I am reading the notes. Um a bishop of Antioch who um was arrested for being a Christian and he was then transported from Antioch in what we now call Syria to Rome. No. The interesting thing was, of course, he didn't catch a plane. They couldn't sort of arrest him, put him in chains, chuck him in a plane and get him to Rome really quickly. They had to do it the long way round, over land and over sea. And that gave Ignatius a chance to write a lot of letters and to encourage people, encourage Christians in the various places he stopped in. Um, and basically do all the things that he'd just been arrested for. Um, he called the people who quite frequently came to see him, when presumably he was under house arrest or whatever in, in the various stopovers, um, fellow travellers and there's for me at least, hopefully for you this morning, um, there is something about travelling and journeying and direction that seems to be a bit of a theme um, running through our readings this morning. And also about being God bearers, being Christ bearers, I think was the phrase that Ignatius used um, as we journey with God, for God, um, under God's command. So let's see how that links together with our uh, prayers this morning. So we'll take a time of quiet before we start um, common worship morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth 
shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory for ever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bring light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake, hopefully refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. So the night has passed and the day lies open before us and therefore we pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. So Psalm 82. God has taken his stand in the council of heaven. In the midst of the gods he gives judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show such favour to the wicked? You were to judge the weak and the orphan, defend the right of the humble and needy, rescue the weak and the poor, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have no knowledge or wisdom. They walk on still in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Therefore I say that though you are gods, and all of you children are of the Most High, nevertheless you shall die like mortals, and fall like one of their princes. Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for it is you that shall take all nations for your possession. Let us pray. God our Deliverer, when the foundations are shaken and justice has departed, defend the poor and needy and give your people strength to fight all wrong in the name of your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So. Acts 26 beginning at verse 12 um, but a little bit at the back plot Paul is before King Agrippa um, in Caesarea I think and this is the third time um, in Acts that we have an account of uh, Paul's conversion. Um, this time there is something very specific that he says that we don't get in the other passages. So we'll begin at verse 12, chapter 26. And Paul is describing his um, various journeys to um, persecute Christians. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. About noon, O king, I was on the road. I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul. Why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up 
and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen of me and what I will show you. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Paul continues, So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the, to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and to the Gentiles also. I preached that they should repent and turn to God, and prove their repentance by their deeds. That is why the Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But I have had God's help to this very day, and so I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Christ would suffer, and, as the first to rise from among the dead, would proclaim light to his own people and to the Gentiles. So I wonder if you spotted the bit that isn't in the other two accounts of Paul's conversion. And it's the bit about, it is hard for you to kick against the goads. This is God. This is Jesus speaking to Saul blinded on the road to Damascus. Verse 14, it is hard for you to kick against the goads. It suggests that because Paul was a studious bloke, we know that, um, and as a Pharisee would have taken time to study scripture, um, he was carrying this this weight of um, seeing scripture and constantly denying what it was that scripture said in relation to Jesus. And the inference is here that this was a weight that Paul didn't need to bear if only he would believe in Jesus Christ and Christ resurrected. So the journeys that he was to he was taking uh, were pointless they were in completely the wrong direction not physically but um, spiritually speaking and Jesus okay might have taken the rather direct approach of blinding him for a few days but was trying to find a way to get Paul to understand his direction of travel um, or what his direction of travel should be with Jesus in control of his life. And that seems to me this morning to um, be echoed in what Ignatius was saying to um, those who came to visit him on his last journey uh, to Rome where he was martyred um, just as Paul is in effect journeying to Rome to be martyred um, because Ignatius was was very focused on on journey and bearing Christ but bearing Christ in the right way I was I was thinking this morning um, I probably watch too much country file but you know that um, about things like ploughing matches where they come from um, and how difficult it is to get a horse or a ox as it would have been in in this era in in um, the Holy Land to actually um, go in the right direction they are carrying a load they're pulling a load um, just as we are hopefully carrying Jesus within us and uh, 
bearing a load of concern for ourselves and for others. Um, but are we going in the right direction? Are we um, kicking against the goad um, that that stops us from doing things like falling in the ditch? You know, we, straight lines in ploughing matches aren't just there for the fun of it. Well, they probably to an extent in ploughing matches they are, but their roots are in are in not getting into trouble, not getting into the wrong place. Um, so not falling in the ditch, not hitting a big rock, um, all those sort of sort of basic agricultural um, things. So are we going in the right direction? Are we listening to God the right way? Um, are we carrying Jesus in the right direction? Perhaps as we um, start as a benefit to think about what we might be seeking in a in a new vicar um, come next year. Actually, that needs to be part of it. Are we carrying Jesus in the right direction? Are we seeking the right direction? Should we be doing things in a hurry, or should we be being pausing? and being patient and listening to what God is saying to us, directing our journeys. So that's my um, two pennies worth for this morning on that passage. Um, it may or may not chime with something you're thinking or praying at the moment. And we'll say the um, Benedictus together blessed be the lord the god of israel who has come to his people and set them free he has raised up for us a mighty savior born of the house of his servant david through his holy prophets god promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant this was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. We turn now to a time of prayer. Prayer for the day and its tasks, for the world and its needs, for the church and her life, and for those we know who are in any kind of need, including some of those among us this morning. Lords, we give you thanks for this new day and this new week as we commend it and ourselves to you help us to journey with you not to fight against the direction that you are pointing us in but to accept the load that is your love your purpose your search for justice, that we might be journeying towards the light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for your broken world, Lord.
we remember, of course, the situation in Ukraine. Those living as they thought in comparative safety who've been um, bombed overnight. Those on the front line or those who are displaced or those who are out of the action, perhaps they've come here or, or somewhere else as refugees. And they're now deeply, deeply concerned about their families, their homes, their livelihoods. We hold them before you, Lord, asking you to bring them strength and encouragement to know you as uh, your their companion. We remember, Lord, so many other places in the world. I mentioned yesterday the the disease that is now rife in Pakistan following the floods. Um, and this morning I think I've picked up, um, is it Nigeria, where there are now floods as well. We pray, Lord, for those affected by natural disaster which so often when it happens in areas or regions of um, poverty or already existing injustice, it becomes particularly difficult to cope with. We pray, Lord, that you will bring healing and hope in those situations protection and purpose and in all things Lord help us to look after your world to the best of our abilities so that we do not by our land management um, make uh, the, the situation of um, climate change worse than it already is Help us, Lord, to um, steer the, the work of creation care more carefully to protect all that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for your church Lord throughout the world not just our little patch where we have our own concerns but the church the Christian church in so many places Lord Anglican and otherwise particularly in places where they are struggling to um, be heard safely not to put themselves at risk so many, Lord, like um, Ignatius and Paul, like others in some Arab countries, like Iran, put themselves at huge risk by speaking out for and living their lives by example pray for protection on them Lord an encouragement to us by their witness remind us Lord of the sacrifices that you ask us to make in your name Lord in your mercy hear our prayer and we pray for all those known to us, among us, and further afield, who are in need. Janet, I know you're with us. We pray for you wherever you find yourself this morning. Pray for healing.
and encouragement. We give thanks that little Autumn is home. We pray that the issues with her medication um, will be resolved. We pray for people like Pete and Chris and others amongst us who are ill with COVID and other things. Bring healing to all those we know whom you draw to yourself through your presence, Lord. Help them to know your presence in their suffering. Help us to do what we can to help. And we remember those who have died particularly remembering um, John and the rest of Joan's family at this time comfort the bereaved Lord Help them to know what it is to be loved by you. To experience um, purpose rather than aimlessness in their you solitude Lord in your mercy hear our prayer and so the collect for today. Feed us, O Lord, with the living bread and make us drink deep of the cup of salvation, that following the teaching of your Bishop Ignatius and rejoicing in the faith with which he embraced a martyr's death, we may be nourished for that eternal life for which he longed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so in confidence we pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being there this morning. Um, I think Joy's been able to be with us for part of the time as well as Janet. Um, and I encourage all of you, including those who will pick this up later in the day, to continue to journey with Christ. Go well and God bless.